Hi, this is Mike Swanson of Wall Street Window, speaking with Jordan Roy Bird, who runs the website TheDailyGold.com. How you doing, Jordan? Hey, Mike. I'm great. Thanks for having me back. Oh, I'm glad you're able to take time out to uh, talk with me. Uh, we last talked, I think it was May, may, may have been early June, about what was going on in the gold market. And at the time, you were looking for lower gold prices. You were even saying gold could go below 1100 even possibly down to 1050 uh, an ounce and you, you thought the gold stocks had lower to go before uh, they would bottom and and, and much less uh, start a new bull market uh, I, I was a little bit more hopeful or positive on, on gold than that and and I so I was surprised this week when it broke down and you know it crashed uh, you know the gold stocks crashed yesterday to GDX and HUI and XAU and GDXJ and all this stuff was down about 10%. Uh, Barrick had a total, complete uh, meltdown. Some of the biggest volume was ever traded in these stocks. So it definitely looks like we had the drop that you were looking for. So I'm curious, uh, what are your thoughts now on what's going on in the gold market? Well, Mike, um I had some hedges on, and very aggressive hedges, those three times ETFs, and so I sold all my hedges yesterday, and so did subscribers, presumably, uh, but that was early in the day. Then then uh, this sector even had a severe sell-off uh, the last couple hours of the day. I mean, it was just amazing to see the miners down 10%. It's only happened a couple other times in the last 10 years or so. Uh, but anyway, if you look, if you look at and you compare the current bear market to the '96 to 2000 bear market, I'm talking about the miners here. Uh, we're essentially at the we're we're, we're kind of it depends what you look at. But if you look at at GDM, uh, which is actually the parent of the GDX, so I, I like to look at GDM because that goes back 20 years, whereas GDX only goes back um, seven, eight years, whatever it is. But anyway. So with respect to the 96 to 2000 bear, uh, this bear market in GDX has now exceeded that. Uh, the Barron's Gold Mining Index, uh, as of last Thursday, because the data comes out only weekly every Thursday, uh, the miners were about 2 or 3% away from tying the worst bear market ever. The XAU is already worse than that 96 to 2000 bear. Uh, the HUI, I think, made a low of 111 yesterday. That would have to go to 100 to tie its worst bear market ever. So we're, we're see, basically, we're historically, if you look at bear markets in the gold stocks, the 96 to 2000 was the longest and the worst. And so it was kind of a real outlier. And now this bear market is essentially matched that bear market. And of course the question is, uh, you know, is this the bottom right here? Obviously I don't know, but some thoughts on that. Um, looking at, I have to look at gold because I think, you know, gold has kind of been, it was the last to peak in 2011. And so it's kind of lagged the sector as a whole. And it just finally started to break down at the end of last week. And gold has kind of bounced a little bit from 1080 to 1090, which I was expecting. Um, but I, I'm still looking for lower gold. I mean, I'm thinking it's going to bottom in the 975 to 1040 range. There's a lot of strong monthly support around 1,000. Uh, so with, with the market being really, really oversold, you want to look to where there's strong support, you know, where selling is going to abate and where buyers are going to come in. And so I'm looking for that 975 to 1040 range to be it. With respect to silver, um, I had a free post free editorial I posted last week and I uh, also with the monthly chart of silver you can see really strong support in the low 12s and the low 13s so we, we got below 15 I don't know where we are now probably around 15 but if we do have another leg down uh, sometime perhaps in the next weeks or the next month or two those are kind of the targets I'm looking at uh, again 975 to 1040 for gold and uh, for silver, we can just say 12 to 13. And so with respect to the miners, I, I, think, I think there's a chance the miners are gonna bottom before the metals, but I, I still don't think it's time to buy and hold the miners yet, just because gold hasn't, 
cracked below 1050 or 1040 yet. So I think when we see that happen, you know, and that'll be the next leg down, I think that's when it'll be reasonable to buy the miners as far as buying and holding them. Um, so that's, yeah, that's kind of how I see things. And just one, one thing with sentiment, looking at the COTs, I mean, I look at the net position divided by open interest. So I look, look at it as a percentage of open interest. In the last COT, gold, I think, was about 10%. I think silver was 7%. Now, gold at 10%, gold's low in 2013, was, I think, 4%. And I think we're going to get the next report this Friday. And I'm, I'm expecting, essentially, it's going to show in gold and silver probably that the net speculative positions are going to be the lowest they've been since the end of 2001. So a 14 year low as far as sentiment. Of course, if you look at Bloomberg and Market Watch and Wall Street Journal, I mean, there's all these articles about how you know, gold sucks, gold is just a pet rock, you know, gold's a terrible investment. And I mean, those are major contrarian indicators that you see around bottoms. So, um, but to get back to the very, very short term, um, I, I think if we didn't already see a short term low left yesterday, we'll probably see it sometime in the next couple of days. And then we'll probably get a good bounce into August. Um, but I, I don't think we've seen the end of the bear market, but you know, there might be another like down in a month or two. But um, as far as right now, I think I'm, I'm looking for a rally to begin um, sometime in the next couple of days, if it didn't already begin yesterday or today. Yeah, I mean, I've looked at, you know, my comparison is looking at uh, markets that have had 10% drops uh, after they've been in a bear market for quite some time. Uh, so, for example, we saw the Russian stock market do that last year. Uh, the Greek stock market did that in 2012. And actually, the United States stock market um, had a ten over 10% drop in the month of March 2009. Uh, to end that bear market, and when you, what I've found is when you've had a ten percent drop, sometimes you get another one, but you, you whether you get another one or not, uh, you typically get either the start of a new bull market or at least a big rally. So the Greek stock market, that's what happened there. There was a big rally in Russia, of course, uh, has rallied strongly from its lows. So. Hey, I would think we should see some sort of rally in the mining stocks. I don't know how long it'll well, take. Yeah, yeah, let me just interrupt you, Mike, because yeah, I found a chart I was mentioning to you. I, I found it as you were talking, and it shows the times the Huey has been down 10% or more. Oh. And it's basically happened. Uh, it happened one time in early 1999. It looks like the Huey had a really good pop for several months, and then it had a final leg down for about a year. And then the next one was in early 2002. And as you recall, I mean, the HUI had a huge rally from 2000 to early 2002. Yeah. So uh, there were, it happened twice then, and the market kind of, uh, over the next uh, six to nine months, it kind of grinded higher, and then it really took off after that. And then the other times, it looks like it happened six or seven times in 2008, which was basically... Um, I mean, looking at the chart, um, you know, we all remember 2008. So, um, I mean, looking at, uh, uh, you know, this chart and when that's happened and given what you've said, I mean, it, it definitely means we're going to have um, a really good rebound at some point and, and the start of a new bull market at some point, most likely. It's just a question of is that going to start in the next day, week, or is yeah. it going to be a month or two? And obviously we don't know yet, but... Um, you know, the long term outlook, the long term risk reward, especially after the last couple of days, is getting really, really favorable because there just isn't any long term downside left in the sector. Well, it's, you know, when, when, when you, me or you or anyone looks at the markets and when we talk about the markets together, there are, you know, <laughs> there are times when you can see a chart lined up and you can think oh and there's you pretty feel you know pretty certain about the short term uh what's going to happen and then other times when you really can't and you need to see what happens over more hours or more days and fr frankly that's how i feel about the gold that the short term seems 
very uncertain to me what will happen in the next couple of days, but the long term is a lot more certain. That's the way I feel about it, at least. <laughs> no, I completely agree with you. And one reason it's difficult to predict is just the volatility. Yeah. So when you see, um, when you, when you see, uh, well, let me go back for a second. It's something I've talked about occasionally over the last couple of months. If you look at GVZ, the Golden Volatility Index, I know the last couple of days it's probably been up a lot. But also, if you look at the Bollinger Bands, like they've really been squeezing in for gold. So, um, it, you know, gold is broken down and from really, really low volatility. So we know we're going to get high volatility. And that's, that's the problem just with the next... Uh, couple days and couple months is that you can get huge moves in both directions, you know, down 10% one day, maybe up 6% the next day, down 5%, up 4% or whatever it is. So I, I think we're definitely going to see a lot of volatility in the next couple months. But I also think that, you know, once we kind of get uh, to the fourth quarter of the year, I think that's when we'll see a really good rally. I don't know if this we're going to really start moving up if it's going to be September or October. But I think once we get beyond the next couple months, we're definitely going to see a really strong recovery. And so as a trader and an investor right now, you just look to buy weakness, you know, buy the fishing right. line type declines, what we've seen, you know, you don't want to, if we have a good 15 or 20% rally in these stocks, you don't want to jump on that too quickly, you know, because I, I think it's just, it, it's probably going to take a couple months to back and fill. Um, it, that even happened in 2008 where it took six or seven weeks for the, the stocks. They had a huge move up and then they kind yeah. of made a, a double bottom. So it, it took almost two months yeah. for them to establish that double bottom and then start to move up sustainably. So given how oversold we are in, in the fishing line type declines, we could see something like that um, over the next uh, two or three months. Yeah, that 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 makes a lot of sense to me. Uh, I mean, I mean, I, I mean, I own some, you know, and I'm not looking to buy more today. <laughs> yeah, but the way I'm thinking is, we could easily see it do exactly what you just said in 2008, and even last fall in November, it did something. November and December did something like that too. At, you know, when it bottomed then. So I'm kind of thinking, well, maybe it might do that. And then on the other hand, if it's going to do a V bottom, uh, then I think it would have to, if the, if the mining stocks fell another 10%, then I think maybe we would get a V bottom type thing. Uh, but, you know, so I'm just kind of, let's wait. I'm just like watching it day by day now and just ho holding what I own. I actually feel more certain in the short term about the U.S. stock market, I think it's topping out and is going to be in a serious bear market within the next couple of weeks. And, and I, th I think if the market falls, the U.S. I think it's similar to 2000 in, in one sense with gold, because gold was in a bear market in 2000 and ended one in 2000, like you were saying earlier. And the stock market began a bear market that year, and eventually the they both were falling. Uh, had bad months to, the gold had bad months in that year but eventually the stock bear market caused gold to go up uh, as the fed lowered interest rates and i think you know there's we were talking about this off the air and I've, you know we both have written about this or talked about it elsewhere so anyone following either one of us think knows about the stock market stuff but i just think we're at a turning point there which will eventually lead to or cause a bull market with gold. Yeah, th those are great points, Mike. It's a great segue because I, I and I know you agree, I do think we're going to need to see the stock market cr start to crack a little bit uh, before we see gold really, really begin a new bull market in earnest. And also, you can also throw the dollar in there because if you look at the dollar chart, it obviously had a really strong move, peaked at 100 earlier this year, and it's basically been consolidating that. I mean, it only retraced about 38%, so that shows a lot of strength. It's above all the moving averages. And I, I think the combination of the dollar breaking above 100 and 
the stock market maybe going down 10% or more. When you start to see that happen, because let me just go back to the dollar. The dollar getting too strong. I mean, I heard IBM there. I, I know they reported recently, and I mean, they're, uh, I think it was IBM. I mean, I was listening to the news in passing, but they were also hurt by the strong dollar. If the dollar breaks above 100, which I expect it to do, and I'm sure you agree, that's going to have, start to have more of a negative economic impact on a lot of these companies. And so if the dollar gets too strong and the stock market cracks a little bit, you know, that's when policymakers get together and say, no, we can't raise interest rates yet. You know, we have to be ready to pump a lot more money into the economy and market. You know, we, we can't let this thing fall over like what happened in 2008. There's just too much leverage. There's, there's too much debt in the system, uh, you know, with respect to governments and corporations that, um, you know, they, they can't allow this thing to even have a little blow up because it can morph into a big blow up again. So and, and that's, you know, people, of course, the news, they're saying, you know, well, all this stuff has been happening in Greece and around the world. And how come gold's not going up? I mean, it reminds me exactly of what was happening in 2008. You know, people, gold was down 20 or 30 percent. And they were saying the same. Well, there's no use for gold if gold can't rally on this. Well, yeah, gold went from a thousand down to seven hundred. And what happened? Then it went up one hundred and fifty percent the next uh, two and a half years. So it, it, it usually it's the re, it's the intervention and the response to these types of things that uh, that's what pushes gold. I mean, go back to the 1930s. Gold stocks, they immediately didn't do well in 1929 or 1930, but most of them really started to go up in 1931. And then the, the uh, of course, they uh, devalued the dollar and raised the gold price in 1933. So, you know, someone could have said in 1929, well, you know, gold has, it's, it's, it's not going up. And the gold stocks, they're not going up. The market's crashing. Well, if you just waited a couple of years, then they went up a lot. I mean, the gold stocks had a fantastic run from 1931 to 1935. And we saw the same thing. You know, after 2008, precious metals did really well for the next three years. And so getting back to where we are now, what we need to see for gold to do well, we either need to see inflation start to pick up or we need to see the Federal Reserve basically reverse their policy. And, you know, one of, if one of those two things happens, then there's the fundamental underpinning of a new bull market in precious metals. And the last thing, Mike, I completely agree. I mean, there's so many similarities between where we are now and where we were in 2000. I mean, looking at the bear markets in precious metals, especially gold and the gold stock. I mean, I already told you about the gold stocks, this bear market, very similar to the 96 to 2000 bear. Uh, and two other things, there's been a negative correlation between stocks and precious metals. From 1996 to 2000, precious metals went down, stocks went up, and then the correlation flipped for a couple of years. We saw the same thing happen a couple of times in the 70s. And I think we could see the same thing happen again, because for the last four years, precious metals have been going down, stocks have been going up. And if something happens to stocks, precious metals are one of the very few sectors that are going to benefit. And the last point is if you go back to that 99 to 2000 time before gold bottomed in early 2001 and the miners bottomed in late 2000, the gold price relative to foreign currencies, so if you're looking at how gold's doing against the euro, yen, pound, etc., I don't have the chart in front of me, but gold against foreign currencies, I think that bottomed in 1999, and it was doing really well for the year before gold finally bottomed in early 2001. Now, gold has been correcting against all currencies, but if you look at gold price in these other currencies, I mean, it bottomed like at the end of 2013 or early 2014. Um, it, it, it had a really strong run into January or February this year, and it's just kind of correcting that right now. So. Go, it, it, what that tells you that it's really dollar strength that's hurting gold. So once the dollar turns around, you know, once it go, breaks above 100 and, and gets too strong and they want to change policy and then the dollar starts to turn around, you know, that'll be the point when gold is really ready to rocket a lot higher. But, you know, like we were saying, um, 
you know, maybe we get a, a extreme V bottom in the next week or two. If that doesn't happen, something will probably develop in the next couple months. Well, um, what that means, you know, I, I've said this to in different things the past couple of weeks, but talking about the U.S. stock market, I've been saying that this is one of the most important moments in our investment lifetimes. If, you know, we're going to top out, in the US, I mean, I think we're going to top out. So that makes this one of the most important times, just like uh, October 2007 or the 2000 time frame. However, I wasn't really thinking about gold when I was making those kind of remarks. But what you're saying means that does apply to gold, too, for the next couple of months uh, this year, just like 2000 did. And, and, you know, you really, over the past couple of months or this year, let's say, probably have had the hottest hand when it comes to figuring out the trends in gold and, and calling them uh, and being right on things. I know you also have companies that you research and stocks that you recommend and so forth and really the implications of everything is now is the time to be looking for stocks to buy uh, to invest in you know if you want to average in or whatever people want to do so where can people go uh, to sign up for your service or get more information from you what, what kind of stuff can you provide for people well thank you for those kind comments mike they can go to thedailygold.com. I have a free newsletter um, that they can sign up for. And, and also I have a, a book, and I'm going to probably start giving that book away for free and then sometime in the next couple of weeks. I'm also going to do an updated chapter on that. So um, I would, you know, bef- I also have a premium service, but um, just subscribe to my free newsletter. I send something out every Saturday night. I send out a weekly update and, you know, just read that for couple of weeks or a month or two and you can kind of see the things that um, I, I like to talk about and some snippets from my premium service um, so yeah that's how they can okay. follow my work and if they want to contact me directly you can email me jordan at the daily all right well thanks for taking the time to talk to me and everyone else and hope we do another interview soon thanks for the opportunity mike yeah thanks